All right, so uh, today we're going to continue with mostly a working session for you guys to work on your, your uh, design for your assignment, your final assignment for this class. Um, but I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about the site and how you're ultimately going to integrate your building to the site, etc. Uh, one of the important things to understand at this point is that you have a file that has your building in it, and that's the way it should be. And so I have a file here uh, that's called my, my base. And this file has everything for my building itself. No site context, no environment, nothing, just the building. And contained within this file would be any blocks, like let's say I, I wanted to use some furniture or something, I would drop that in here as a block. Uh, and that would contain uh, basically everything that has to do with my building. Furthermore, all the materials should be applied in this file as well. So this is the file that you were working on last class, essentially. Uh, so we do the texture mapping, we do the materials, we get everything set up in this file, and then we get to integrating this to the environment. And once you have this file saved, um, we're going to create a brand new Rhino file, which I have one open right here. And th in this brand new Rhino file, this is where we're going to create the environment about our, uh, our, our building. So this is where site also starts to get kind of important. So in this new file, I'm going to go ahead and go to File and then import. I'm not going to use a block reference here. I'm going to actually import the geometry uh, for the start here. And then I'll go get the uh, site SketchUp file. So I already have the site. I already gave it to you. You guys downloaded it as a zip file last class. So you should have this SketchUp file already ready to go. Um, so I'll go ahead and load it up. I'm going to do the coast for this one as an example. The building that I designed fits really nicely in the coast setting. So that's the one I'm going to use. So I'll go ahead and click on Open. It'll come in as a mesh object, uh, the little person. We should have gotten rid of the little person here. And so here's my mesh object that represents my site. And I've already had a look at this. And I know that I'm probably going to use one of these little ridges in here to nestle my building in. Okay, That's what feels about right for, for my particular um, building. But I do have to convert this object into a, a NURB surface that I can work with because it's a mesh right now. And so I want uh, to do that conversion. We've already done it with the contour command in both directions. Um, so I'll repeat that for you guys to see here as well. But I do want to point out one other command. And if, um, if you're trying to kind of rush through things and you don't mind having the jagged surface, so if you look right here, let me look at it shaded. We can actually, I can get rid of that flat surface. See how this is not a particularly smooth surface? Okay. We can actually convert this straight to a NURBS object, but it's going to have the facets, and we're not going to be able to rebuild it to make it smooth. So I do want to point this out, because sometimes if you're in a hurry and you need some, some quick terrain, or you want it to look like this, it might be beneficial. And so if you, uh, if you do that, we're going to use a command called mesh to NURB, which is going to convert this object into uh, a NURB object. And so I went ahead and I pressed Enter. I can then delete the mesh that I had selected. And this is not a mesh anymore. It's actually a triangulated NURB surface. It's a poly surface. If I were to explode it, maybe, right? it will break into individual little surface pieces. So it's lots of little triangular pieces. So this can work for you if you're OK with the faceted surface. To me, I want it to be a little bit more smooth when I put my building in. I don't want the facets. So I'm going to go ahead and rebuild it all together. So I'm going to back up a few steps, I hope. One more. And I'm back to my mesh here. I'm going to go ahead and do my contour. And we let me turn on uh, my knot, my vertex. Good. I'm going to do this object. Uh, you know what? Let me clarify and add a layer here. Let's work on layer one. And I'll go off in this direction at 100 foot intervals. Uh, let's do it a little tighter than that. We'll do it at 75 foot intervals. There we go. And I'll go in this direction at 75 foot intervals again. We'll go ahead and turn off the Google layers. And I'll look at this in the top view. 
Remember, I have to make it clean. So we'll trim this. It's a little bit bigger so we can see it. Trim. And I'm going to go ahead and draw so that I don't lose too much of the terrain. I'm going to draw using this tool here, which is the interpolate points. And I'm just going to go from end to end all the way along here. Almost there. All right, so once I have that, I can go ahead and take all of this and I can do a curved network from it. Let's put it on its own new layer. And let me go to curve network surface, or excuse me, surface network surface, curve network. And we'll go ahead and build this. Remember that this will result in a very, very dense object. So I'm going to have to do a rebuild as soon as I, I finish. So we'll let it finish, deselect, select just the object, rebuild. And I'll do it by 100 by 100 to start. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And then we can turn off this layer, and we have our nice smooth surface. So remember, the reason that I did this is because I can continue to rebuild. You know, Maybe I want 80 by 80. And at some level, it's going to be just the right amount of smooth to get rid of those facets. Okay? And again, that's a, that's a choice that you make depending on how you're doing your final model and what it looks like, whether you want the facets or you don't. Uh, and so in the case of this, I didn't want the facets, so I'm, I'm back to this. Okay? So there's my little piece of terrain. I've already thought ahead a little bit and thought about my building going on kind of one of these little shoulders of land here. Um, you're going to maybe have thought ahead, maybe you haven't thought ahead about how your building's going to nestle in. Today's job is to figure out, wait a minute, does my building really fit on the site? Right? You can always go generic and put it up on the top. There's plenty of people that choose to put it right on top. Sometimes if you hang it over the side of the cliff, you get more out of it because it can kind of cascade down or you can have terraces or whatever, and you have to kind of think through how that works. So now in this scene, I'm going to go ahead and save this before I move forward. And I'm going to put it in today's folder. And I'm going to call this the master scene. Um, and then we'll, we'll work from there. This is fall of 2016. And I'll go ahead and click on Save. Okay. So let's go ahead and make layer 2. Let's rename layer 2 so that we know that this is the terrain. And then let's clean up and get rid of all these extra layers that I don't need. rid of these. And I'm just going to create another layer so that I can attempt to select my Google piece. Let's get rid of that. And I'm also going to go up to Edit Block Manager, Edit Blocks Block Manager. And I think Susan is still here, so let's get rid of Susan. We don't need her. All right, and then we should be able to get rid of layer 0 now. Yeah, good. So we have the terrain by itself on a layer. And it might be a good time to, let's say, create an environment layer. And we'll put the terrain as a sub-layer of the environment layer. Okay. So now I have the terrain, which is perfect. And I'm going to bring in that building that I created. So that's over here in this file that's called the retreat base. Let me go ahead and save this as so that it's the current version. It's not spring anymore. It's fall. There we go. And I'll click Save. And then I'll go ahead and jump back to my master scene. And I'm going to go to Edit Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And I'm going to make sure that I pick my, I'm not looking for a SketchUp file. I'm looking for my retreat base fall 2016. There it is. 
and I'm going to open. And so it's going to come in as a block, which is good. That's the way I want it. I'll go ahead and say OK. And here, I want to just link it. I don't want to embed and link, and I don't, and I don't want to embed it. I want to link it. I'll go ahead and say OK. And I will get, in a second, my little building, which obviously is significantly smaller than the, the terrain itself. Okay, no surprise there. Notice that all of the layers that are coming in are grayed. That means that they're linked files, which is part, part of the reason that I like to have them grayed in this version is so that you know that it's a reference file. So any changes you make shouldn't happen in this file. They should happen to your original. And you really, I, I, I beat you over the head with this setup because you're going to save yourself a lot down the road if you separate out where you're doing what work and use the block references. So. I'm going to drop this in so that it's close to where I want it to be. I said I wanted it to be kind of on this shoulder somewhere. So we'll go ahead and drop it in relatively close to my building. Now, I guessed, and it turned out actually pretty close to where I wanted it to be. Actually, it's pretty spot on. Uh, that was not intended <laughs> to be quite that accurate. Um, sometimes it happens. Now, you see that because I have this building kind of sitting on the side of the, the cliff here, Right? I needed a lot more below my building to make sure that I didn't have my building floating. So back in the original file, if I went back here, I built myself an extra little foundation wall that's significantly deeper than my building itself. Right? And I did that on purpose so that it would cover up any gaps that would occur here. Now, if I hadn't built that yet, I could go back to my original file and add that so that it, it dropped down. I also want this back end to be able to be kind of tucked up in the scene here a little bit. So I'm going to do some, some moving around. And actually, if we look here at the front, I've got a problem there. It's not quite in the right place. So I'm going to take this whole block, and I'm going to start to move it. I'm going to be very careful with how I move it and try to move it in one direction at a time so that I can look and say, OK, well, that, that solved a lot of the problem here. But like in here, that's looking pretty good. That's OK back here. Uh, it looks like I've got a little bit of a window problem there. And obviously, I have the, the ground coming in on the top here. So let me take this, and I can move it vertically. Move V for vertical. And we can go up uh, maybe you know two feet or so, so that it's just above, right like that. Looks pretty good. I have that little gap there still showing. So in this case, maybe it's a good time to just go ahead and fill that in back in my original file. So let me go back to my original file here. There. And I'll take this. And let me just add a little bit more to it. So I'll create a rectangle here. Oh, come on. There. And we'll drop that down as well. So there it is. And obviously, I'll have to texture map that so that it looks seamless later on. I'll go to File and then Save. And I'll jump back to my master scene here. I'll go to Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. And we'll see that, yeah, my linked file is newer. That's exactly what I want to have happen. We'll go ahead and update it. And we'll close. OK. And that piece now comes in. So it's exactly kind of what I was after. Okay? Now, I've got a few problems. Okay? So if we look here in my courtyard in the middle of my building, I have ground that goes through my building. So I need to deal with that and cut that part of the ground out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my building in the top view like this. There it is. It may be helpful to look at this in ghosted mode because you can kind of see through your building a little bit. Depends. Okay, hold on a second, guys. I'm sorry, I'm totally sick, so I'm, I'm suffering. <laughs> Such is life. Anyway, now I can breathe a little bit. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to find a way to cut out the terrain so that it doesn't run all the way through my building. And so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and use just a regular polyline. And in the top view here, I'm going to snap my way around my building. And it may be helpful to just switch into pure wireframe mode here. And I'm going to work my way around my building. OK. 
I have a little cap on the top, so that cap um, is part of why I have to, to change this. Okay, so this here is a wall that I get to. And I forget exactly where that wall happens. So sometimes you have to switch into the other views. And you may find that when you do this line, it goes up and down as you go around your building. And you'll see this a little bit better later. And that's OK, because we're ultimately going to project it. So I'm going to go to right. There. There we go. And now I'll work my way back out to there, to the end here, to that end. Oops. And we'll go ahead and see for close. And now I have that curve identified. And if we look at that curve that I just created, right, it doesn't look like much in the perspective view because it goes up and down and around my building. Okay? But I'm going to use that as a projection on my top view here. So I'll type project. And we're going to project it onto my surface. There it is. And if we were to look at it in the perspective view now, you see how it lines up nicely on my surface? Okay. So let me go ahead and hide this for just a second. And we can see there's my projected line right on my surface. Let's do a split of the surface. So I'll take the surface, I'll type split. I'll use that projected line here to split it. And now we end up with the surface separate from the terrain. Okay? And so I can actually go ahead and delete this little piece of surface like that. And now if I went back and showed my object, right, we'd see that I have a few issues. Okay? Generally speaking, we cut it out. It looks pretty good. Uh, looks like maybe I didn't quite cover that completely. Let me move it up slightly. Let me go move vertical. Let's try a foot. Good. It's just high enough now. All right. So that looks pretty good. All the way around. I'm reasonably covered. That's good. However, I have this little piece where the, the cliff dives down into this retaining wall, and I'd like to fix that uh, so that I have a little piece of surface that lines up nicely. Uh, here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll draw another set of lines. We'll go right along here, there, to this end, there, and then back up to this edge. Uh, it might be easier to do it in the top view here. There. And we'll go ahead and close that. So there's that line. And I'm going to project that line onto this surface which gives me another little piece to cut out. And so if I were to hide my original, there is my new projected line. And I can use that to split off this little piece. Okay, So let's go ahead and split of this with that line there. Now that's a separate little piece as well. Okay, So I'll go ahead and I'll delete this piece, because <coughs> it's not doing what I want it to do. But I am going to save this curve right up there because I'll use it later on. Let me go ahead and explode it. And we can get rid of a few extras here. Get rid of this, this, get rid of this, this, and this. But I did save that curve right there. Okay, so let me show my building again. And I want the dirt to come down here. So let me go ahead and draw a little line. That goes from, say, here to there. Hit enter. And I'm going to move this slightly down so my wall sticks up a little bit higher than that line. Did it not draw? Oh, come on. Let me turn off center. There. All right. Let me take this line. And I'm going to move it vertically, maybe like, I don't know, four inches. Nope. Move vertical. How about negative eight inches now? There we go. I wanted it down. So I have that. I'm going to take a line from this endpoint back to right there. So I have that line. And then I'll take a line from this point and put it right back at that point. 
And so now I have one, two, three, and four lines. And with those four lines, I have the ability to make a curved network. right? So I can go ahead and go up to surface, curve network. There it is. I'll say OK. And I've now built that little piece of surface in to match up nicely with where I want it. So it, it seems correctly here. Right, but it also allows me to kind of have a, a piece of ground here that's graded to fit in with my building. So using those two strategies, you can put your building into the site, cut it out, and then tweak the terrain around your building to make it look right. OK, so now that I have my building integral to the site, right, I'll spend the rest of the time today going back and forth, working with my, my drawing, my building, adding more levels of detail to my building, uh, et cetera. Next class for exercise 220, we're going to actually create our first exterior daytime rendering. So we'll put in other stuff like the HDRI background image um, and the, make sure the materials are assigned and all that stuff to create that first render. Okay? Do you guys have any questions about that site integration? No, it's using all the same tools that we've already done in class. So it should go pretty smooth. Remember, your building is a separate file from your final uh, master site. And we're going to keep those separate and use the block reference for updates. All right.